Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the common emitter configuration of the BJD. So this common emitter configuration is the frequently used configuration of the BJD. And in fact, for most of the time when the BJD is used for the amplifier, then it is used in this configuration. Now in this configuration, the emitter terminal is common between the input and the output side. That means in this configuration, the input is applied between the base and the emitter terminal and the output is measured between the collector and the emitter terminal. And here, to use the BJT as an amplifier, the base emitter junction is forward biased while the collector base junction is reversed biased. And schematically, it can be represented like this. And here, if we see the direction of the currents, then it will look like this. So here, this base current IB is the input current, while this collector current IC is the output current. Similarly, this voltage VB is the voltage on the input side, while this voltage VC is the voltage on the output side. Now considering these DC biasing voltages are already applied, if we apply the sine wave between this base and the emitter terminal, then we will get the amplified output between this collector and the emitter terminal. Now in this configuration, to understand the behavior of the device, we need to understand the two types of characteristics. One is the input characteristics and the second is output characteristics. So this input characteristics defines the relationship between this base current IB and the voltage VB. Similarly, this output characteristics defines the relationship between this collector current IC and the voltage VC. So first of all, let us see the input characteristics. So in this input characteristics, different IB versus VB curves are shown for the different values of VC. Now if you look these curves, then they are similar to the forward characteristic of this PN junction diode. Because if you look over here, here the base emitter junction on the input side is forward biased. And one more thing if you observe over here, as the value of VC increases, this base current IB reduces. So let us understand the reason behind it. Now here, this voltage VC can be given as voltage VCB plus voltage VB. That means the voltage between this collector to base terminal and the voltage between base and emitter terminal. Now for the fixed value of VB, if we increase this value of VC, then this voltage VCB will also increase. And as the value of VCB increases, the reverse bias which is applied between the collector and base terminal will also increase. So let's say for a sum voltage VCB, the depletion region is created at the collector to base junction. And now as we increase the value of VCB, then this depletion region will get wider. So due to that, the effective base width will reduce. And due to that, now the probability of recombination in this base region will reduce. And due to that, most of the electrons will get collected at the collector terminal. So due to that, this base current IB will reduce. So we can say that as the value of VC increases, this base current IB will reduce. And due to that, we are getting this type of curves. Alright. So similarly, now let us see the output characteristics. So this output characteristic shows the relationship between this collector current IC and the voltage VC. So here, the different IC versus VC curves are shown for the different values of the base current. Now this curve can be divided in three regions. One is the active region, the second is the saturation region and the third is cutoff region. So one by one, let us talk about each region. Now in case of the active region, as the base current IB increases, this collector current IC also increases. But here, unlike the common base configuration, as the value of VC increases, this collector current IC also increases. That means here, these collector curves are not totally horizontal. And the reason is that, as the value of VC increases, then this collector to base voltage VCB will also increase. 
because as I said earlier, this Vc can be given as voltage Vcb plus voltage Vb. That means as the value of Vcb increases, then the width of the depletion region will also increase. And due to that, the effective base width will reduce. And as the effective base width reduces, then the probability of recombination in this base region will also reduce. And due to that, more and more electrons are able to cross this base junction. So due to that, we can say that as the value of Vc increases, this collector current IC also increases. Now whenever the BJT is used as an amplifier, then it is used in this active region. And in this region, this base current IB gets amplified by the factor of beta. That means if IB is the input current, then the output current IC can be given as beta times IB. So this beta is known as the current gain of this common emitter configuration. Now if we talk about the AC gain, then this beta IC can be given as delta IC divided by delta IB. That means the change in the collector current to the change in the base current. Now usually the value of this beta AC and beta DC are not same. But as they are very close to each other, often they are used interchangeably. Now if we talk about the next region of operation, then it is the saturation region. Now as the value of VC reduces and it gets close to the zero, at that time this collector to base junction becomes forward biased. So whenever this collector to base junction and the base to emitter junction are forward biased, in this condition the BJT operates in this saturation region. Then if we talk about the third region of operation, then it is the cutoff region. So the transistor operates in this region whenever the base current IB is zero. Now in this cutoff region, if you notice over here, unlike the common base configuration, here the collector current is non-zero. Or we can say that in this cutoff region, the value of collector current is relatively large. So in case of the common base configuration, we had seen that whenever the input emitter current is zero, at that time, the collector current which exists is due to the reverse saturation current. And we had seen that it can be given as ICBO or we can say that it is the leakage current. But in this case, that means in this common emitter configuration, whenever this current IB is zero at that time, the value of this leakage current is more. So let us understand it. Now in case of the common base configuration, we had seen that the collector current IC can be given as alpha times I plus ICBO where ICBO is the reverse saturation current. Now we also know that this emitter current I can be given as IC plus IB. That means we can say that this collector current IC is equal to alpha times IC plus IB. And if we rearrange the equation, then we can write it as 1 minus alpha times IC that is equal to alpha times IB plus ICBO. That means IC is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha times IB plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha times ICBO. Now we know that this alpha divided by 1 minus alpha is equal to beta. And we have already derived this expression in the introductory video. So we can say that this collector current IC is equal to beta times IB plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha times ICBO. Now whenever this base current IB is zero at that time, this collector current IC can be given as 1 divided by 1 minus alpha times ICBO. Now typically the value of alpha is very close to unity and typically it varies from 0.95 to 0.99. That means the value of 1 minus alpha will be very small. Or in other words we can say that the value of 1 over 1 minus alpha will be very large. And to be precise it will be equal to beta plus 1 times ICBO. Because if you are aware the beta can be given as alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. So beta plus 1 can be given as 
1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So this will be the value of the leakage current whenever the base current IB is equal to 0. And it is defined as current ICO. That means it is the leakage current which is flowing through the collector to emitter terminal whenever the base terminal is open. So this value of ICO can be given as beta plus 1 times ICBO. That means here we can say that in this common emitter configuration, this leakage current gets amplified by the factor of beta plus 1. So let's say for a one transistor, if beta is equal to 99 and the value of ICBO is equal to 1 microampere, in that case, this current ICO will be equal to 100 microampere. And that is why in this cutoff region there is a large leakage current. Now as I said earlier, during the active region of operation, this input current gets amplified by the factor of beta. And this beta is known as the current gain of this configuration. And whenever we connect the load between this collector to emitter terminal, then we can also obtain the voltage gain. So this common emitter configuration provides the moderate current gain as well as the moderate voltage gain. But it provides the very high power gain. And in fact, that is why this configuration is frequently used for the signal amplification. Now, if we talk about the input and output impedance in this configuration, then they are in the moderate range. Now, in this configuration, typically the output impedance is in the range of 50 to 100 kilo ohms. Now, although it is high, but it is lower compared to the common base configuration. Because if you see over here, in the output characteristic, this collector curves are not perfectly horizontal. Similarly, if we see the input impedance, then typically it is in the range of kilo ohms. And that can be found by finding the slope of this input characteristic. So here, this input impedance or the input resistance can be given as delta VBE divided by delta IB. So in short, these are the basic properties of this common emitter configuration. And we will see in detail about all these properties during the AC analysis of the BJT. And in fact, at that time, we will also find the exact values of this voltage gain and the input and the output impedance. But for a while, just keep in mind these properties of this common emitter configuration. So I hope in this video, you understood the basics of this common emitter configuration. So if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.